This video will discuss bond stretch terms in molecular mechanics. So one of the energy terms in our potential energy function in molecular mechanics, specifically in amber, is the exact model that we're using here. Our energy has an element which is determined by the bonds in our molecule. So let's say we have a system here that looks something like uh, an acetic acid molecule and a water molecule. So we need to specify to the system in some way that the what the bonds are in the system, that we have these 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 bonds in the system. That might be determined by reading in uh, molecular XYZ coordinates. That might be determined by reading in from a PDB file. And maybe the program determines that automatically from the coordinates. Or maybe we have to give the program some other information and specify more information about what these bonds are. But either way, one of the relevant structural elements in AMBER and most molecular mechanics programs is the are these bonded elements. So for the energy of our bonds, that is a sum over the energy of each individual bond. So for each individual bond in our system, the energy is a KB, which is this bond spring constant, times the bond length R, how far the two atoms are apart, minus REQ, the equilibrium bond length, both of these being parameters, then that quantity squared. So we have a spring constant times bond length minus equilibrium bond length quantity squared summed over all of the bonds in our system. So as I mentioned, we have two parameters per bond. We have the equilibrium bond length, typically in units of angstroms, and the bond spring constant, typically in units of energy per distance squared, because we have distance squared here, energy there. This needs to be energy per distance squared. So the typical unit of energy I'm going to use is kilocalories per mole. So kilocalories and kilojoules being related by uh, 4.184. So kcal per mole angstrom squared. And our variable is r, which is the bond length which you would measure in angstroms, which will be some value between 0 and infinity. Measure, and you would compute that according to our video on bond lengths back in the previous chapter. OK, so that gives us a graph which looks sort of like this. So if we were to compute the exact uh, quantum mechanical potential energy surface here as a function of the uh, bond length or internuclear distance, then we get something that looks like this purple line here. So if we define the zero to be the equilibrium bond energy, then at short range, we go up very, very high very quickly. At long range, we, st we go up, but then it eventually decays out to some maximum value where the bond is dissociated where we have the dissociation energy uh, indicating that height. In molecular mechanics, we're indicated in approximating this near the region of the, the equilibrium bond length. So we use uh, what we use in quantum mechanics called the harmonic oscillator model, where we have approximated this potential as a parabola. So it's uh, quadratic in R, depending on R squared, R squared away from the origin, with this bond spring constant being determined by the second derivative of this surface down at the bottom. Or maybe, or maybe each of these is uh, derived to reproduce some type of desired experimental property. So there are some deviations there. So we have at short range, uh, typically the, the exact result tends to go up faster than quadratic. And so it gets a little bit off at short range up the wall. And at long range, um, you're obviously going to keep going forever up in energy, whereas the exact result eventually decays and the bond dissociates. So in molecular mechanics, you cannot dissociate a bond because if you keep going, you keep going up in energy. So the energy at an, at an infinite distance is not the dissociation energy. The energy is infinity. But um, our energy typically at the equilibrium bond length, if we substitute in REQ here, we get a zero and zero in energy from there. All right, so I mentioned that we can get this uh, spring constant as I, if we desire from the second derivative at the bottom of the well here. 
if we want to do it that way. And a typical value of this is typically going to be around 300 to 600 kilocalories per mole angstrom squared. Typical value for equilibrium bond lengths will be what bond lengths typically are, something between you know 1 to 1.5 angstroms in many cases. So if we take a look up in the program that I've got up here, which you can uh, follow along from my GitHub account and then clone that and run from a Jupyter notebook if you so wish. So inside the directory structure here, I've defined this kind of custom file type, which I call a PRM or a parameter file, where I declare each of the atoms, so atom, atomic index, and then the atom type. I'm calling this just carbon one, oxygen one, the XYZ coordinates, and then these are going to be some parameters we'll talk about later, some non-bonded parameters. But the interesting thing here is I'm defining a bond, defining a bond between atoms one and two, between the carbon and the oxygen in this carbon monoxide molecule, which has a bond length of 1.1 angstroms right now. Uh, the bond force constant I'm dis describing as 1292 kcal per mole angstrom squared. And the equilibrium bond length is a little bit longer than our current bond length of 1.128 angstroms. So, if we run a uh, if we run a Jupyter notebook on this, so I'm one level down from the top level directory inside this uh, structure here. So I have a script called mm.py, which uses all the modules that I built to compute all these energies. So it tells you to run uh, python mm.py and give it an input file, which is either xyzq or prm. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to go up a directory. I'm going to go to the geometry subdirectory. And these prm files are in this prm directory. I placed various examples. I'm going to look at carbon monoxide. Shift enter. So it's here it has broken down all the different energy components. Right now the only energy component is from bonds because that's the only term uh, that this molecule has. Showing up some of the parameters that I inputted from reading in this file. And then of interest to us we have the bond parameters, the bond length, uh, what atom types were present in that bond, and then what the energy of that bond is. So these parameters with this bond length gives an energy of 0 0.6253 kilocalories per mole for our amber molecular mechanics bond stretch energy.